Hi, YouTube. Uh, just got back from a uh, fly fishing trip out in the Central Mass area. Um, I was fishing for uh, brook trout, or actually prospecting for brook trout. Um, um, my son and I had, uh, do what people call blue lining. So you look at a map and you find the blue lines. The blue lines usually indicate streams and rivers, things of that sort. So um, I went out to the uh, Laurel Lake areas of central Massachusetts and uh, popped up uh, my map and took a look at a couple of blue lines and hiked in. Uh, just beautiful in this time of the year. So anyway, I, I followed this uh, this little brook trout for maybe uh, half a mile or so after I after I reached it. Uh, in areas that you know romantically you look around you say, "Geez, this this nobody comes out here." It's probably true, but it was really a very pretty area. It didn't look touched by uh, by the nasty hand of man. There were no beer bottles and uh, um, cigarette uh, cases around. It was just uh, kind of a very nice. Walk in the woods, following a stream, looking for brookies. And to my pleasure, I actually hooked a couple of very small brookies and brought them to the net um, as gently as I could and released them, and they did just fine. So uh, anytime you're out fishing for brook trout and you're able to, to, uh, to land a couple, it's a great day. Um, I want to say they were natives only because they were very small. Um, they weren't much bigger than my pipe, actually. Uh, but I uh, uh, have a, uh, uh, a three-weight rod that I use. And uh, on the three-weight rod, uh, just kind of poking it in, into little holes and undercuts and things, uh, they put up a nice little fight. So it was a great, uh, great, after great morning, I should say. Um, had some time to uh, to myself out there, and uh, on the way back, way back to my Jeep, I was smoking uh, what was left of the uh, Prince Albert. Um, when I fly fish, I use uh, basket pipes, uh, so I don't I don't take along my better pipes uh, because I've been known to uh, get excited and drop it in the water. Or bounce off a couple of rocks so uh, my pipes that I use when I go fly fishing only because of the way I smoke and the way I move around don't tend to survive very long um, but as I got uh, getting my gear off and putting it away so I could head home a fellow walked by probably in his look like his maybe in his um, mid to late 50s and uh, he was walking um, a very large dog looked like a uh, like a Shetland pony. I think it was a uh, uh, Great Pyrenees, uh, big massive white white animal. Very friendly, very pleasant. Thank goodness. Uh, but the guy walked over and wanted to know uh, what, what tobacco I was smoking in my pipe. Uh, I told him it was Prince Albert, and he said that uh, it's exactly the same uh, aroma that he remembers from when his father smoked his pipe uh, back when he was a kid, and that he liked it quite a bit. And then he caught the uh, he caught the uh, uh, the fragrance of the pipe tobacco uh, as he was walking up up the road and just had to stop by and see what it was. So that was kind of fun. Uh, on the way back, I stopped and picked up a bottle of Loch Lomond whiskey. This is uh, new to me. I haven't tried this before until I got home, but uh, I just poured myself a uh, poured myself a glass. And uh, sat down and filled a pipe with some McBaron's uh, Seven Seas Gold, uh, which brought back uh, brought back a lot of memories. Uh, McBaron's, for me, was uh, the first pipe tobacco I smoked uh, when I was in the Navy uh, back during the, the Vietnam era, and um, smoked it uh, quite a bit. Uh, 
at sea after after my flight deck shifts and um, so when I uh, when I light it up uh, it brings back a lot of memories for me of, uh, of uh, my time in the Navy my time on Yankee Station and um, all good memories uh, and I really enjoyed it but I was pairing it up with this uh, Loch Lomond as you can see it's a, a pretty clear or light color uh, it's a single grain uh, and most single grains tend to be from my experience they tend to be uh, lighter colored like this um, they're, not, they're not they're not blended with uh, 15 different types of other whiskeys to get the flavor they're looking for this one is uh, the flavor that the uh, the brewer intended it's got a crisp uh, crisp smell to it when you uh, when you first bring it to nose Uh, it's a nice warming whiskey. I get hints of uh, like chocolate. And uh, now I'm starting to get a hint of uh, a fruit. I'm not sure what fruit it is, but it has a kind of a fruity flavor to it. And it blends very nicely with this McBaron's. So uh, it was a fun morning. Had a chance to go out and do some blue lining. Uh, one of the most fun about blue lining for brook trout is I don't use uh, I don't use um, wet flies. I use uh, dry flies. So I tie some very small dry flies, and uh, the excitement of watching a little brook trout come up and slam it like it was a tarpon taking a, a crab uh, uh, really is 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 quite a gas. So. A great morning uh, casting uh, a spruce uh, moth pattern, very small, probably um, maybe a size 22 or 24, um, and smoking my Prince Albert uh, tobacco. And now I'm having a, uh, a pipe of uh, McBaron 7 C's gold, and my whiskey matches the uh, matches the color. It's gold. Uh, and makes for a very nice day. So uh, this coming weekend is Easter and Passover is uh, about the same time. So I um, hope everyone's having a, a great holiday. And um, as always, uh, tight lines. Have a good time.